Many of you know that pressure, especially going door to door, not knowing what's going to be on the other side of that door, right? We don't know if we're going to have someone that likes to sleep in late and they come into the door saying, why are you waking me up so early? I've had a couple of those phone calls already before. Now let's go ahead and turn that on. So this morning, we are going to be going into the book of Matthew this morning. The book of Matthew, and we're going to be going and starting in uh, chapter 7. And it's a good place for us to start this morning. Um, but we're going based off of the entire, the title of this message is, What You See is What You Get. What you see is what you get. So how are we seeing this morning? How are we looking this morning? And I'm not talking about the person in the mirror. I am talking about the person in the mirror. What am I talking about? You. Here we go. Everyone. We're not talking about the person next to you, but we're talking about the person in the mirror. How are you seeing yourself today? How are you perceiving yourself to be this morning? This is important for us to know each and every single day so we know exactly where we stand at in the will of God. That the truth be spoken is we can present ourselves to ourselves as the most awesome person in the world. No one can compare to us. No one can be as good looking as us. No one can talk better than us. No one can do things better than us. But yet, when we get the opinions of others, they have their opinion to share. Amen. They're going to say something different that might hurt your feelings. They're going to say something that's going to bring a realistic enlightenment to you to where you're going to ask yourself, man, either you're going to accept it or you're going to look at them and say, you know what, you're kind of rude. So this morning, we are looking at the Word of God to where we have no choice but to accept it for what it is and say, Lord, if I do not receive it this morning, help me change that to uh, where I'm able to receive it and change me consistently daily. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We come before you, God, with open hearts. And I pray, God, as you are the miracle worker, God, I pray, God, work out miracles in our lives. Continue to have your way in our family in our jobs, Lord, in every, every area in our lives. Father, I just thank you, God, for what you're doing. Continue to have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Matthew chapter 7. All of us, or a lot of us, are familiar with these verses. Going on verse 1, it says, Judge not that you not be judged. For with, the, what, with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Meaning not to judge, do not express a judgment or opinion to as to any person or thing more commonly, basically unfavorable. Don't look at others and make a judgment for yourself. Because sometimes, well a lot of times, you know, I can go into the store, if I have a if I have a haircut, if I have a bald head, guess what the first thing is gonna be? He's a cholo. Because I get it at work. I comb my hair back, I'm a bato. I cut my hair bald, I'm a cholo. If, I, if I'm in between that, I'm one of the, I'm one of the gangsters, the, like a gangster skateboarder. No matter what, I'm still put into that bad category of I'm still some type of thug. And then people, like the other day when we were at the store, me and my wife were at the store, um, one, of, uh, one of the associates were there. And I seen him like, oh, that's one of the associates. And uh, lo and behold, the associate comes up says, hey, Dana, how you doing? Oh, is this your wife? Yeah, it is. Oh, hi, hi. And she starts talking, and she's like, you know what? All of us thought your husband was really mean and cruel and this and that. And I'm like, well, well, thanks a lot. But then he started talking. And then we realized that he was soft, and he's like a, like, what, a bear or whatever, soft teddy bear or whatever. I'm like, hey, calm down. You know, <laughs> you're ruining what I'm trying to put at my job site, and if that gets around, I'm going to have to rework on that reputation. And here I am, I'm telling my wife, don't listen to her. I'm mean, I'm cruel, I tell them what to do, I crack the whip. But yet, from the first impression, just by the looks, they didn't want to get near me. They didn't want to talk to me, they didn't want to have the time of day with me, even though I was in charge of them. But now that they got to know me, now they're like, okay, he's cool. He does whatever he needs to do, and he's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to go any further than that, okay, because I don't want to give any bad ideas. But yeah, you could tell the expression that, you know, she liked me overall. And so that goes to show that before there was a judgment there. And we have to be careful when we look at others because sometimes 
They've been through a lot more than what we have. And they're looking for someone to give them something to smile about, and you're, we're the ones that are able to give that to them. They could be a cheerful person, but one day they're having just a bad day, and they're walking the street just getting away from a bad circumstance. And yet, if you go into that, into that person's presence, and you go and you smile at them, and you're saying, hey, how are you doing this morning? You could be that one person that brings a change into their lives. Not knowing on how, not going by how they look, by going how God is leading you to do it. Sometimes God will lead you to someone that looks ugly, like ferocious. He could hurt you or she can hurt you. And God's saying, go speak to that person. And in our mentality, we're like, man, I don't want to talk to that person. They might do some harm to me. They might carry a weapon. They might do something bad. But yet when you go and talk to that person, that person's like, hey, how you doing? And they're the most bubbly person you ever meet. Have you ever had that experience before? And then you walk away from that and you're like, man, thank God I listened to you now. Because that person now became my best friend. That person I'm consistently hanging out with, eating hot wings and pizza and whatever else favorite fruits he likes to eat. I'm indulging in that too as well. <laughs> Going on verse 3, it says, Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look at, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. See, this isn't me speaking. This is Jesus. Jesus is calling it out. Why are we looking at everyone else's issues and not looking at our own? Isn't, it, isn't that so much easier, though? Isn't it so much easier? God's dealing with us about an issue that we have, and we're fighting God, right? Well, we don't fight God in here, right? We give it up so easily. But there's some of us, we fight. We're like, no, you're going to have to break my hip out of place. You're going to have to do something, and you're going to, like, just, you're going to have to do something very, very to get my attention. You're going to have to do something. And God allows it to happen. But yet, we still want to fight and say, I don't want to let go of this. But then we turn our attention to someone else. Well, why don't you pick on him? Or why don't you pick on her? Look at how they come to church. Look at how they, look how they act. Look how they present themselves. Look at this sister. Look at this brother over here. They go to church, but yet they're, they're not acting so Christian-like. You see, we, turn, we seem to turn our convictions our issues and we turn it and give it to someone else and then we begin to look at them harshly we look at them badly and lo and behold we begin to mistreat them because now they became a part of our attention that they never should have so we have to look to look at ourselves and whatever issues that we're struggling with this morning whatever it is that we're going through and allow God to work through that situation Allow God to cut that situation off. See, God's good at cutting those things out of our lives. But are we allowing him to do that? Have you ever noticed that God will always deal with us? But we always want to look at someone else like they have it worse. We shift it over very easily. It, it, it's, become, it's become more of, a, more of the scapegoat. We look for the scapegoat in the church. Or we look for the scapegoat at work. Whoever says they're Christian, God, focus your attention on them because I don't want your attention no more. You keep bugging me. You keep coming and asking me this question of letting go of some stuff. But we have to allow God to work in us so that when we go to those that are struggling with real issues too as well, that we can go in there and help them out too as well. See, God is allowing you to see these things in, those, in their lives. He's not allowing you to see those things in their lives so that you can go and point fingers at them. Because it's once you get over through your issue, and once you're delivered from that, then now you're able to go and help that brother, that sister out that God exposed their heart about. See, don't, don't think that, that, don't think that, you know, for one minute that we had this te telepathy, whatever it is, telepathy, whatever that you're able to see someone and, and, and start thinking bad about them. No. See, God's working on you. And in the same process, he works, he's working in you. Yeah. 
So he's doing both things. He's allowing you to see others so that you can encourage them. But yet, we have to allow God to work in ourselves so that we can help them work in that. See, we can't walk something out that we never walked out in ourselves before. We have to walk the walk before we talk the talk. If someone's struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with, how are you going to help them out? You're going to get pulled right back into it. Trust me, I've been there plenty of times. I'm fired for God. I go back. I fall. Well, that failed. I go back. So many times it kept happening until I finally said, Lord, you deal with that guy. Even though he was my best friend, you deal with him, Lord, because I'm tired of this yo-yo. I'm tired of having to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I had to cut him out. I had to cut him out. And say, Lord, you deal with it. Lord, you do it. You send someone his way because right now I cannot do it. So we have to be wise in all the things that we do. Because sometimes we don't want to face what is wrong with us. And we, make, we tend to make our issues a lot smaller than what they really are. Even when others may not be consistent in their walk with God we expect others to be, even though we're not. Even though we can't be, we expect everyone else to walk that fine line. See, this is the type of expectancy we should have on ourselves. Going on verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. See, it's saying seek, meaning to seek after, to look for, strive to find. It's not hide and seek where you find the person and all of a sudden, there you go, it's done. No, seek. You have to go. You have to desire to look for something. You have to desire to find it. And there's only one way that you can do that. It's by seeking through prayer, seeking God through it. See, there's nothing else that we can seek in this life that's going to answer your prayer. There's nothing. You want to be rich, going and seeking the lottery ain't going to make you rich. You might be lucky, maybe because God allows it, but you're seeking the wrong thing. What are we seeking this morning? What are we seeking this morning? Going to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah 29, verse 12, it says, Then you will call upon me and go pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me, and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. Look, when we seek God, we got to seek God with all our hearts. Because if we're not seeking God with all our heart, then what are we seeking God with? Because sometimes we seek God when we're in trouble. I'll tell you, that's with all my heart. When I'm in trouble, I, I, put, I tear my heart out and say, Lord, here's my heart. Help me in this mess. Help me in this circumstance. Why? Because I'm probably going to get in trouble. That's when I cut my heart out, right? That's when we used to cut our heart out. We want that quick fix. But what he's saying is we need to come with a desire. We need to lay everything at the footstep of the Lord. And say, Lord, I desire you and nothing less. I desire you and whatever you have in store for me. And this is all that I have, and I lay it before your feet. And we have to desire it with a passion. We have to hunger for it and chase it. We have to remember that he is the one that fulfills the promises for his people. For everyone, verse 8, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you? Who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? Have many, has any of you ever gave your child something that was sin good for them? Like if they ask for french fries, you give them a piece of rock. You say, go put some salt in that dirt out there and go see what it tastes like. You ever give them what was second best, what was third choice, fourth choice, fifth choice? Especially when you know they deserve it. When you know they deserve it, you want to give them the very best. When they've been working with you like all day today, you're out there in the yard, you're working in the yard, you're doing all these things, and they're like, man, Dad, we, we really want to get a pizza. 
and we want to get a pizza from this particular place because it's good. And your heart is like, man, all right, we'll go do that. Why? Because they deserve it. Why? Because we want to give them what their hearts desire because they worked for it. They're putting out work for it. They're doing everything that they're doing to help you out. So therefore, you're giving them the very best. You want extra pepperoni on that? You want extra olives on that? Sure, let's put that on the order. Let's do that. And just like the Father in heaven, when we ask him of something, he's not going to say, you know what, here you go, here's something that's just going to barely get you by. He's going to give us something that's going to get us by. But at times when he gives us that, we don't take appreciation for it. Because when he gives us something, he gives us something that's doable. He gives us something that will help us manage to live a little bit more longer. But yet in the process, it gives us enough, God gives us enough so that we're able to grow through the process. You ever notice that? Sometimes God will just deliver us from, from whatever it is that we're in. And there's sometimes that God will just give us enough so that we can get through the process. Why? Because that's good enough for us. Why? Because he's given us his very best. Because if he was to spoil us, then what? We wouldn't know how to work for it. We wouldn't know how to fight for it. We wouldn't know how to do anything besides just go for him and then automatically it's a quick fix. But from the desire of God's heart, he gives us enough so that he can see the growth take place in our lives. And sometimes we have to remember that when God gives us something in the midst of our trials, when God gives us a little something in the midst of our fights, he's given us just enough so that we can make it through the next day. But it has to be in our desire of our hearts continue to continue to seek him the next day and the next day and the next day so that he could continue to give more and more and more. See, this is where our faith grows. This is where our trust in him grows. How else is it going to grow? If God was to give us one fix, a quick fix, and it was to last for a month, when, when will it be the next time we actually reach out to God? The next month. Right? The next month. If God gave me something that's going to last a year, well, by golly, God, I'll see you next year. <laughs> Let the truth be spoken. But he gives us enough so that he can build that trust in us. And as we seek him daily, our desires build in him even more each and every single day. See, Christ gives us his very best, and his very best is to help us grow, to teach us to grow, to teach us to respect, to teach us to mature. Oh, we don't like mature. We don't like maturity. Oh, maturity is so hard. Because maturity means sometimes you have to bite your tongue. That means you have to stay quiet and you have to listen. Maturity means you have to grow up. I thought when I was a kid, I thought being a, an adult was so easy. I thought it was so easy. I wake up, eat a bowl of cereal, watch some cartoons, eat lunch, eat a bowl of cereal again, eat lunch after lunch, eat a bowl of cereal again, then I eat dinner like two times and I go to sleep. Life was so easy when I was a kid. But yet, I, knew, I thought I knew what life was all about. Oh, here comes baby number one. Oh my gosh, I have to get a job. <laughs> that was rough. Not, know, not truly knowing how much responsibility it was. Oh my gosh, it took me away my sleep now. And got introduced to coffee. <laughs> Baby number two, oh, I got to get a better job. Baby number three, oh my gosh, when am I going to stop? <laughs> my wife said, no, nope, that's it, no more. Okay, that's, that's my signal. But yes, the responsibility kept it on going. We had to continue to move with that responsibility. As we continue to grow, we had to continue to mature. As we continue to have kids and they get older, we have to continue to stay ahead of them and stay wiser, which we always will be for those of you that think you're smarter than your parents. <laughs> always be. We may think, you may think you're getting away with it, but by golly, we're looking at each other like, they're funny. Let's see how far they get with this. And we can keep a close eye on you. Oh, you better believe it. Oh, we, we're done with all the trends. And I know that, but when God speaks to us, we know everything. But we, we act like we lost. But see, as we, continue, we, as we continue to grow, we continue to raise our kids, our dogs, or whatever it may be, 
We change through the process. We mature through the process. Every time we handle something, it changes in the process. Same thing with God. Same thing with God. We allow him in a little bit, and as he continues to mature us and it helps us to handle every situation, we go to the next step. And as he continues to help us to mature and handle that situation, we go to the next step, and we grow, and we mature more and more in the Lord. And therefore, our trust, our faith, everything falls on him. And so sometimes when we stumble, it's that much more easier to get right back on. Why? Because we've been building that all along. Going on verse 13, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is that way, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. It's talking about destruction is meaning death with its external exclusion from God's kingdom. So it's easy, it's easy not to go to heaven. But narrow is the gate, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. See, the awesome thing about serving God, the awesome thing about this, we have a free will. We can live our lives any way we want, any way we choose to. So we live how we want to live today, tomorrow. Any way that we choose to, any way that we want. But whatever we choose to build today, whatever we choose to, to live today, is what we're building for tomorrow. Is what we're building for tomorrow. <coughs> you ever notice that? If whatever you build today, you're building for tomorrow because you continue to do it no matter what. Because it's your desire to do so. So when you desire something, you start the process, and it begins to grow from there. There's always a starting process on it. But it says on verse 14, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are a few who find it. Why? Because you have to work for it. You have to desire to work for it. Serving God isn't easy. It's challenging. You have to stand in opposition with the enemy. Against the enemy. But God has your back. God always has your back. No matter what you're feeling this morning, God still has your back. Sometimes if he feels like he has you way back, but he's there next to you. But in our feelings and our emotions, we feel like that God's far away and he's not. Sometimes we distance ourselves, not knowing that how close God really can be in us. Because God never leaves us. His word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. So God is standing close to you still this day. But we have to fight for it. Verse 15, it says, Beware the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree can bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. You will know them. One good thing is a reflection of who you are is a reflection of how your kids are. You ever notice that when they're little and they're small? And they say, Mommy and Daddy did this. And like, oh, hey, shh. Have you ever had that embarrassing moment? They expose you, right? They tell it how it is. They have no filter. They have no filter. What are, what are we pouring into others? What are we giving to others? How we, what kind of fruit are we producing? Because that fruit will follow your footsteps on however you teach them and direct them. However you teach them and direct them, what, what kind of role model are you this morning? Yes, you are a role model. If you're not a role model to your kids, you're a role model to someone that's out there that may be struggling or that may, may be fighting. See, someone's still watching no matter what, where you're at. 
And even though they may know something bad about you or see something bad about you, they're seeing your outcome. Why? Because they're hoping that you're going to make it through. Because that means it's going to give them hope. Your fight is going to give someone else hope. See, you're not fighting for yourself. You're not fighting for your own salvation. You're fighting for someone else that's in the background. How are you handling it this morning? Are they seeing you seek God through the process? Are they seeing you give encouragement through the process? Are they seeing you cry through the process, but yet giving God the glory? See, because we cry. We get upset. Oh, we bite our lip, and sometimes we don't bite our lip. We let it out. And everyone around us hears it. But what are they seeing after the fact? What are they seeing after the fact? Do they, do they still see pursuing God and saying, Lord, you know what, Lord, forgive me because I am foul. Yeah. And help me through this process. Are they seeing you get back off your feet, dust yourself off, and continue to go forward? See, you're setting the path for someone else. You're clearing the way for someone else. You are teaching the way to live out God's ways for someone else. And sometimes we want to cry to ourselves and it's hard, but we have to remember that if we give up, we're living free range for the enemy, for those that are behind us. And if we're praying for someone and the enemy gets a hold of you, well, that prayer for that person is going to go somewhere. If it's not coming from you, it's going to hopefully, by God, it's coming by someone else. If you're the only one praying for someone, you've got to fight for that person. You've got to fight. Verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me that day, I'm sorry, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. The will of my Father. Well, what is the will of my fa well, the Father? This is what we have to pray for. This is what we have to see because God's will is different for each and every one of us. It's different for each and every one of us. In Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, verse 20, verse 20 says, And it was told by him by some who said, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. And this is Jesus talking. Are the ones that do it. Those are the ones that he knows. Those are the ones that we know that he knows. So we must be doers of the word. We have to be doers of the word. Knowledge will only get us so far. Verse 22. Many will say to me that day, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, who, you who will practice lawlessness. What lawlessness is meaning in the King James Version is iniquity. A worker of iniquity is meaning a wicked, impious person. Not showing respect or reverence, especially when it comes to God. How can we expect ourselves to think that God knows us if we're not showing reverence towards Him? If we're not giving Him something to help Him recognize us? You ever had that before? You have a cousin that you haven't seen for so long and they get a haircut and you don't whatever, and then you haven't seen them for a couple of years, and they say, hey, cuz, how you doing? And you look at them, and they're like, like, who are you? I haven't talked to you for a couple of years. You ever have that happen to you? I had that happen to me before at, a, I think it was my cousin Gabriel before. I kind of recognized him all because of his height <laughs> and his face. <laughs> and, I, and I told my wife, I said, I think that's my cousin. I haven't seen him for like four years, five years, man, even longer. And I'm looking, I'm, and I'm looking, he's looking at me, we're looking at each other, right? And I'm like, Gabe? I'm like, what's up, cousin? You know, we're talking. It still felt weird. It still felt awkward. But we still recognize each other. 
The thing is, it took, it was hard for us to recognize each other because we haven't seen each other for so long. See, the more time and time that we spend less from God, and we're asking God to move in our lives, and we're asking God for confirmation, we're asking God for a change, we're asking God for something, and God begins to speak to you, we must be able to recognize his voice. Because if the more that we stay out of prayer, the more that we stay out of his presence, and when God is trying to speak to us, we're going to ask ourselves, well, Lord, is this you? I, 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 is this really you? And then we get in that place of, well, I need another confirmation. I need another confirmation. And another confirmation. Why? Because we're not recognizing the voice of God. We're not recognizing this, the voice of confirmation. See, God will bring in confirmation. But we have to be able to understand it so that we're able to receive it. Verse 24 says, Therefore, moreover, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. For it was founded on the rock. So what are we building today? What are we building today? Are we building on our desires? What is it that we desire today? If we're using the right material... What we are building today will, shall not be destroyed. And the material that we should be using today is whatever God's given us. So what God, whatever God's given us. Well, well Pastor, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't got no real material that I can use to build. Well, you have a gift. Have you started using that? Have you started using that? Have you started having faith in that gift that God's given you? Start on that. Start on whatever God's shown you already that you have the ability to do for his kingdom business, for his kingdom work. So we've got to ask ourselves, what are we building on this morning? Because if we're building on that, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we are going to stand. We're going to look the enemy in the eye and be like, ha! Huh. And we're going to be able to stand. We're going to face tough times. I'm not saying that's going to be easy, that we're just going to continue to laugh. But we're going to be able to stand. We're going to be able to stay strong. And we're going to continue to use what God's given us to build his kingdom. But it's whatever we desire in our heart is what we're going to be giving out. In verse 26, it says, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Everything in this life, everything, will fade away. Just yesterday, yesterday, all my hair was all black. And it's fading away. It's getting gray. Or was it wasn't yesterday. Okay, I like. For the past couple of years, I always had a nice black hair. And now it's just going away. It's fading away. I'm getting wrinkles. I don't know why. I'm fading away. Man, Lord, what's going on? I was supposed to live forever. Those are our mentalities when we're younger, right? And then we hit our 60s and, and then we're still young. We hit our 70s and we're still young. No matter what, we're still young no matter what. But yet, our bodies don't want to keep up that age that we're feeling. <laughs> because our bodies are fading away. They're fading away. We get older. What we possess gets old. It gets rusted. And what we eventually gain, we lose over time. Everything that we're working for, it all goes somewhere. It gets passed down. It goes somewhere. Or it breaks. Whatever we're building on this morning, are we building on the eternal stuff? Or are we building on the stuff that will be temporary? We have to look at what we're building this morning. 
Because we could be building a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But the little bit of this, which is God's kingdom, a little bit of that, which is the world, God's kingdom will continue to go on forever. Whatever legacy we leave here today is a legacy that people are going to reflect on for the rest of their lives as long as they remember you. How are they going to remember you today? Are they going to remember you as a fighter? Are they going to remember you as someone that continued to pursue God no matter what? Are your children going to grow up and see you as a role model? Or are they going to go somewhere else and look at someone else as a role model that's going to lead them astray, a different direction? we got to hold ourselves to that expectation. Who was our role model when we were growing up? And how did that help us up to this point of our lives? How did that help us and how did that affect us as we were growing up? Because some of us had it, had it bad. Some of us had it good and some of us just, it just always stays with us. But who is our role model today? Who is your role model today? I hope you, everyone said Jesus. Amen. Jesus is my role model. I like the way he flipped tables over. I'm looking for an excuse I could do that one day. <laughs> Jesus did it. Why, why can't I? He can't have all the fun. Jesus was crazy. He spoke his mind. He had no fear. Why? Because he was doing the will of the Father. No matter what, he spoke whatever the Father wanted him to speak, and he didn't care. That was it. It was a done deal. And then closing, it says, and so it was in 28, and so it was when Jesus had ended this, these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You all have authority here today. Each and every one of you have some type of authority. See, you're, 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 when God's giving you the authority for your kids, when God's giving you kids, when God's giving you something, you have authority over it. You take control over the situation, whatever comes into your life. Whatever the case may be, there's nothing too big or too small that you don't have authority over. And the reason I say this is because if God's with you, and God has authority over all things. Now, whatever circumstance, whatever you're facing here today, you have authority over that. Why? Because it's God that's in you that has authority over whatever you're going through. And if you give him that authority, and if you give him that obstacle, therefore, you give giving God authority. So therefore, everything is in your hands. How are you handling it this morning? How are you giving it to God this morning? Are you giving him all authority? Or are you giving him some? You ever notice that when we give God a little bit of authority, he does a little bit of something? But when you give God full authority, man, God just blows your mind. Yeah. Remember those days when God continued. Remember, we have to remember those days when God blew your mind. And when you remembered after he did something, how you were just amazed and how you were just kind of like, wow, how did that take place? I had to let that go and it was hard, but man, God just blew that out of the water. Be reminded this morning of the authority that God has in us that he's given each and every one of you. No longer walk with your head down but walk with your head up. See, the enemy looks at you with your head down and sees that he has authority over you. He sees that you're defeated. He sees that you're struggling. We all struggle. We all have some type of defeat but we continue to stand up and we continue to fight. That's where we are different. We don't give up. We continue to fight. And that's just it. Continue to fight. To continue to push. Don't let the enemy come in and lie and deceive to you. And deceive you. And come in and tell you that you're weak. Because if he's coming in your life this morning, if he's coming in your life this past week, and the enemy's coming and telling you that you're weak, and the enemy's coming in and reminding you of your struggles, well, obviously the enemy has something to be scared of. Or else he wouldn't be messing with you at all. 
See, there's something hidden in you this morning. And the enemy doesn't want it to wake up again. And the enemy's going to fight you tooth and nail to keep it in place that you're at if you're struggling here this morning. But God is saying, you know what? I'm here and I set you free before and I'm going to set you free again. He says, but do you believe this morning? Do you believe I have the same authority as I did yesterday, today, and forever until I call you back into eternity with me and the Father in heaven? We have to believe this this morning. We have to fight for that. We have to play Eye of the Tiger <laughs> in our minds and our hearts. <laughs> have you done that before? You get so mad at the devil, you're saying, Dead man, devil, I don't, I don't fear you. Bring it to me. And he brings it to you, you're like, oh, that hurt. But then you get you get this, you got this going on. I am the tiger. Let's be real. Maybe that's just my song, okay? Someone else has a different song. But well, we got to do it. Yeah. We still crazy. Yeah. We still go to doors and knocks and we not know what's at the other side of that door. We got some cranky people out there. <laughs> All we do. But oh well. The seed has been planted. Right. And the seed of the word of the Lord will continue to be planted as long as we live. And in this kingdom building and in this ministry that God is doing, we will continue to do the crazy things that God has called us to do and stand in the way. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faith.